All right. Um, so hi, everyone. Uh, my name is India. I work with uh, Sachi Art on their curation and art advisory team. And I've been with Sachi Art for two and a half years now. I was a art history and math teacher before this, um, before I came to Sachi Art. Um, Megan, do you want to give a little intro to yourself? Sure. My name is Megan. Um, I've been with Sachi Art for about seven years now. Um, my title is Senior Curator. And um, and prior to that, I worked in the entertainment industry and the fashion industry, but I had studied art history. So I'm glad that I finally made my way around to to be working in, in the arts again. Yeah, great. Um, so welcome everybody. Today, we're gonna be chatting with a few of our rising stars. Um, we'll introduce them in a second, but just a little background on uh, the rising stars report. So each year, our team, the Sachi Art Curation team, we publish our annual rising stars report and our aim is to introduce recent graduates and up and coming artists to our global network of collectors. These artists are garnering international acclaim, expanding their collector base, and getting featured in solo and group exhibitions. So here's the, the slide. You guys see the, the slide now? Mm -hmm. So this slide is, is our official uh, selection committee. Rebecca Wilson, of course, she's the founder of Sachi Art, and then um, Aaron and Megan. Um, so this year, we've organized our cohort into five different categories according to the practice and subject matter. So the first one is the observers. Um, so these the observers, they're primarily creating scenes from everyday life, including still lives. And you can see Ray Madrigal in the bottom right-hand corner there. Um, they'll be joining us today um, on our talk. And then the next category is the expressionists. Um, as you can see kind of from their photos, they're working in an abstract style. We have the storytellers. These are more domestic scenes and cityscapes, um, and they tend to have a narrative feel to the paintings. And we're joined today by Eleanor Cox, who is in the top middle there, but then also on your screen. Um, she'll be joining us today. The portrait tips. Um, which is a little self-explanatory, people that paint people. <laughs> <laughs> the last category, the exper experimenters. Um, these are people who are working um, in w pushing beyond just painting um, and incorporating uh, different elements into their artwork um, and materials. And Dylan Bardo will be joining us. And uh, you can see his photo there in the bottom right-hand corner. Great, so that's a little overview of our project. Um, let's uh, let's start, Megan, if sure. you wanna. I think we should just start off by asking everybody to introduce yourself, um, talking about a little bit about where you are from, where you are located now, and, um, and a bit about your work. So I'm going to start um, with the first person on my screen, and that would be Ray. Hi, I'm Ray Madrigal. Um, my family has roots in Michoacan, Mexico, and my mom is from Tennessee in the US. Um, I work pretty much with every medium I can get my hands on. Right now, that's a lot of painting and drawing since that's what I can fit in my studio apartment. Um, yeah, and I, I like to explore details of everyday life that I feel like are often overlooked or that I feel like um, capture an emotion or a bit of humor that. Um, I try to approach the world by paying attention to um, things that go unnoticed sometimes. Great, thanks, Ray. Um, and Eleanor, you're next. Hi, um, I'm Eleanor. <laughs> um, I um, I'm gonna go with the same kind of routine that Ray did. Um, I grew up in the countryside in Devon in England and then moved to London. Um, after a little gap and studied and now I'm living here. Um, I am a painter primarily, but I also experiment with writing and making sound works and some video works. Um, they all kind of feed into each other. And I suppose they're all interested in um, a kind of sense of, space like um, meaning within objects and spaces and how we kind of push stories and meanings into the spaces we inhabit 
and the objects we have and how emptiness kind of feeds into that I suppose yeah very interesting and Dylan hello everybody um yeah my name's Dylan Bardo um I also grew up in the countryside in England in a <laughs> county called Surrey uh even though I don't sound like it I know it's confusing but we'll just brush over that uh and I'm actually I'm currently still studying in London and I've been living here and working here for the last four or so years and um a bit like Ray I pretty much use whatever I can get my hands on and stuff and at the moment that's a lot of uh wood that I pull off the street and I cut and build into these structures and do a lot of these like comic comic-esque uh, illustrations on them uh, which at the moment following this kind of like dystopian narrative where I kind of like express all my like misgivings and angers about the present in some like distorted future um and a lot of like more abstract stuff with collage a lot of like uh, found material collage uh and it's a lot about getting out like a sense of alienation and stuff but trying to keep things playful and charming and uh trying to provide like a sense of escapism for people who look at it and stuff so yeah that's pretty much me and for all of you a, a bit of a backup question um was it always art that you felt drawn to? Um, did it come early in life or later in life? Anybody can jump that, jump in if, if you feel like answering the well, question. <laughs> I guess I can go, I, just cause I was talking already. Um, I never actually really grew up doing art a lot. I went to like quite like an academic school and I really grew up playing a lot of sport and just getting, trying to get good grades and stuff. Um, and I, went to university initially to study philosophy and politics and I dropped out of that after a couple of years and moved back in with my parents and started painting just as a hobby but it really I just fell in love with it straight away and stuff and I was doing abstract paintings kind of as like a form of therapy for about a year or so and after that I started kind of like sharpening my teeth doing that I started thinking about doing it as a professional venture and stuff you know so yeah. it really started from quite like a personal therapeutic sense and now it's moved into something I really want to do professionally you know? That's great. Anybody else uh, feel I'm like kind of, <laughs> I'm almost the opposite because I think I've, I wasn't always completely certain, um, but it's always been in the background. Uh, my granddad actually wasn't allowed to go to art school due to money reasons. <laughs> um, and I think that that's kind of been in my mum's brain. So she was always very enthusiastic to encourage me. Um, and I, it was quite an emotional thing for her, I think. So, yeah, I've always, it's always been there as something I was probably going to do. And here was I am. Your grand, was your grandfather painting when you were a child? Yeah, uh, yeah, he did all kinds of things. He actually ended up being a photographer. Um, I think they could, they could allow that. <laughs> um, he did an apprenticeship as someone who, before there was um, predominantly photographs in newspapers, he used to do the, the um pointillism drawings that were in advertisements and things um so he did he he definitely was creative he was a bit of a whirlwind of a man um but he never he was never allowed to go to art school and he never i think he completed one painting is in, in his life so here i am painting yeah. for him <laughs> <laughs> so nice yeah ray did you always intend on becoming an artist well Intending on becoming an artist, I not so much, but I it was always making things was always part of my life. Um, I was very introverted when I was younger, and then also growing up, you know, as a queer Mexican kid in a largely like straight white um, space as a young person, it was just a way to talk to myself and like um, get out some of the distress that I was feeling that I wasn't sure um, other people were experiencing. Um, but I kind of thought it was something that I was going to grow out of and like get a quote unquote real job when I got older. Um, but then uh, closer to the end of high school, I was lucky enough to get into this like pre-college program at California College of the Arts. I thought that, yeah. you know, you stay there for like a couple months. I thought I was going to do that and like play artist for a couple months and then graduate high school and go get a real job. Um, but then just the mentorship I had there was really impactful. And then they ended up giving me a pretty sizable scholarship, which I think kind of convinced me and my family that this was something I could more seriously consider. Um, and so from there, it's just been 
a lot of gratitude that this is something I get to keep in my life. Um, similar to Eleanor, my dad was a musician when he was my age and my mom was a writer, but then when they had me, they kind of had to be more practical about things. And so trying to kind of, um, you know, be let them live vicariously through me in a way um, and yeah. feel very lucky that I have their support for what I want to do. Yeah, that's a that's a huge um, advantage. Dylan, is anybody in your family an artist? Uh, yeah, not my parent. Neither of my parents are. Although my mom is uh is very artistic. Um, uh, she kind of flipped houses for a lot. Um, of well, the last like ten years and stuff. So, uh, with different like um partners and stuff, she would kind of knock down dilapidated houses and kind of reinvent them and stuff. So uh, I guess yeah, she is very artistic, and my yeah. uh, my brother and sister are both actors. Um, and my granddad was a good photographer, but not in any kind of professional sense. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Yeah. So the three uh, the three of us, me and my two siblings, would you know somewhat artistic, um, but it never really expl- like. Yeah. That sorry. explains the influence of film on, on your work. The, oh, the definitely. Actors yeah. in the I'm, family. Yeah. I mean, especially with me and my brother. I mean, we grew up just like obsessed with filmmaking and. And watching films and um we both thought we'd end up working in the industry and stuff and as a teenager when I was like you know like stuck in my you know academic headspace and stuff I thought I'd definitely try and go into like film production or something uh so I always thought I'd go into something creative my parents were very like um supportive in that kind of sense you know but um yeah uh yeah I think I mean, you know and still like films especially with the like dystopian kind of comic book scenes I'd I try and do they're very much influenced by the the films that I watch it's nice to hear about parents being supportive of these art <laughs> artist careers um okay India did you have a, a question you wanted to ask yeah um just as a side note Megan it's good food for thought with you and Luna Megan has a <laughs> is she eight years old now a nine-year-old yes yeah. <laughs> Great. who's been coming to the other art fair since she was two years old so hopefully she's rubbing off on her Fired, yeah. no I my mom is an architect and I would always we would go to museums together and so she she got me down on the the art history art history path but awesome um so now we're going to move into just more talking about our your practice um and kind of just walking us through when you you can choose any um any either pieces that are in the slides or um, any kind of different media that you're working on right now and just how it goes from idea to end result. Um, Ray, do you want to start since we're on your slides or do you need a minute to formulate your thought? I I guess we could use this fish head painting as an example. Um, It's based off of the grocery store near my apartment in Chicago that I go to all the time and um, tapping into that habit of noticing everyday things and trying to see beauty and um, just kind of sympathizing with the things that are around me. Um, So I was like really struck by the fish heads and the expressions on the fish faces and the little refrigerators and kind of uh, either projecting my own set like sympathizing or projecting my own sense of panic on those little creatures and um, oftentimes I start pro- I start a project more by writing than I do by sketching um, so going home and writing about the experience of walking through the grocery store and um, the colors I saw and the feelings that came up um, and then slowly pictures start to emerge um, and then I'll usually make like a diagram of um, how I might build something, what materials I might want to use. Um, I I like to paint on things that aren't just like a store-bought canvas. Um, so this one is a stretched picnic blanket. I just feel like materials that are more involved in my life are a little easier for me to make meaning out of because you're starting with that kind of imbued object already. Um, and then just spending long periods of getting lost in the forms that I'm trying to replicate, like uh with the label and like a single hair brush just trying to get really lost in like not seeing letters so much anymore as seeing shapes um trying to trick your brain into seeing something that you maybe see every day trying to see it in a new way um yeah 
It's super cool. My, I was going to follow up and ask if this was actually a, like a mixed media piece. So that's very cool that it's on the blanket like that. Great. Um, how do I switch? There we go. Uh, Dylan or Eleanor, do you want to jump in next? Rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> <laughs> no, you go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. That will help my nerves. I'll go second. <laughs> uh -huh. Um, yeah, so where the question was, how do I, yeah, where do you start? Like, where does, where do you get your ideas from and how do you carry that through into the finished product? Okay. So, um, I think I've always, like, I've always made work that has something to do with, I basically just say confusion. Um, I'm really interested in what happens in my brain and uh, I suppose like pushing on other people when I'm in states of being unsure. Um, so I think that that's an overrun, overriding thing generally, but I actually, in a similar way to Ray, I write and actually spend most of my university career writing and not painting at all. Um, so I think writing and kind of distorting um, ideas and, and thoughts and making kind of poetic sense out of things a big part of how I start things. I also find inspiration in books. Um, I actually have one that was a really big influence in the series of paintings that you're seeing now. Um, this book is by Angela Carter and it's essentially about a war waged between two cities but the um the weapons is basically confusion and objects transforming in front of people and no one being able to trust what they are anymore but then as the book moves through it you realize that those, those transformations aren't necessarily anything more than what people desire them to be and I think I find that to be a really interesting thing when it comes around to thinking about how we understand the objects around us and how much of what we consider to be kind of the reality we live in is what we desire it to be. Um, so yeah, and I think you can see in my paintings, there's a lot of kind of this like empty dark room and that's because I'm interested in what's a conducive space for that to really kind of shine out. Because I feel like when you're stood in darkness or an empty space, that's where you start to imagine these things, I suppose, um, where you can feel them the most. So, Great. yeah. Um, and, and I guess... Sorry, <laughs> sorry to talk over <laughs> here. I just wanted to ask if um, there was a conscious choice be behind the palette that you're using. <laughs> Um, yes, there is a bit. Um, I think I green. I think it. There is a bit. I think it kind of happened emotionally first, and then I became really interested in the way that green is both a really natural color, but feels really off um, in these contexts. It doesn't feel real, but it also has an ability to make you feel like you're seeing objects but they're not necessarily lit up objects like they feel like they might be within the darkness but I'm somehow letting you see them um I think it kind of has this ability to be like an inverted form of light <laughs> um I don't know almost like I suppose looking at something through a night vision camera but also maybe when you're just trying to stare into a dark room and your eyes start forming these blotches and those kind of, blot or if you just, if you have a dark space next to a light space, sometimes that dark space actually emanates a color and it's kind of like beyond the dark. That's where the green <laughs> comes from, I suppose. <laughs> That's very interesting. Yeah, no, I was, that was exactly what my question was. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to <laughs> talk over you. Have you ever, um used like actual like glow glow in the dark paints have you experienced I haven't, it 
okay. I haven't because I think um so much of the glowiness in them kind of comes from contrast right like the colors none of the colors are nearly as um vibrant if they weren't next to such dark tonal colors and I think it's kind of reaching it's like playing with paint and reaching into the really dark colors and pulling out what I can that I find interesting so that kind of trying to find something and I feel a bit like if I was to introduce two bright colors it, it kind of play I don't know I don't know maybe I will one day <laughs> maybe I will one day <laughs> yeah it, it's well it's well said that that idea of the contrast and how it related to your emotions is very very cool Thank you. all right and Dylan so uh -huh starting with idea from conception to uh the creation process and all the way to the end do you want yeah, to sure um well I guess like in its most simple sense like uh art for me is is escapism you know um it just allows me to like translate all my like um all my like apprehensions and annoyances and angers towards things that happen you know in everyday life and in like the bigger you know you know political picture and like in you know global events and stuff you know it can really like you know it can put a anger in you uh and the fact that I get to spend most of my time in a locked room uh you know you know doing what I want and cre creating all these like fantastical scenes and pulling things off the street and like sawing them apart or like ripping them apart and gluing them back together and stuff um you know I'm just I'm, I'm trying to find like a level of intensity whether it comes in like the detail of the drawings or like, you know, the intensity of the collages that, like, that just draws me in enough to into it where I can just like totally disappear, you know, which is like where art really, that's where like it started for me. It was like, it was the first thing that I ever did that allowed me to just like kind of let the entire world just melt away, you know, and I never had that before, you know, I just had constant like, you know, constant like deadlines and things to do on the weekend and stuff. And it's like now I can, you know, lock myself away. And do this thing that like just allows me to disappear which is really what i'm looking for that's like the state that i'm trying to find um and i guess i don't know i mean i originally i was just like doing that with these like large scale abstract paintings um and you know just over years of of uh a process of uh of, of um what's the process called um <laughs> like you know trying and failing with different uh, materials it's just led me to this like kind of mixed media approach where I kind of just combine uh, all these different mediums um, like I get this wood and I paint I do like a paint a layer of acrylic over it and the colors are usually primary and vibrant because I'm actually colorblind uh, not completely but uh, I just like to use like one very like vivid bright color to use as my base side so because mixing colors is, can get quite confusing for me so like a combination of colors um I'm just lost so like one kind of misty color I like and then I can just draw on top of that and, and mostly black um and yeah I mean like like Ray was saying like the writing really instructs my work so I mean I used to write a lot I used to write every day um and uh I used to well the writing really instructed the work especially since I've been doing this kind of like large-scale comic book format where I've like um I use these kind of like punchy abstract like um, narrative lines to like describe what's going on in these scenes and try and connect all these different scenes in this one kind of um, it's kind of like a psychedelic dystopian fantasy world that everything exists in and stuff and then I try and like relate that back to the real world where like you know I can express how I feel about the real world and how like you know I feel about you know me like I have a lot of like uh, grievances about modern media and like, um, you know, just like the superficiality of like social media. Um, and I can take that and I can like infuse it into this dystopian fantasy world and kind of like escape into that. And, you know, it's just like, a, it's still just a form of therapy for me. And now some people want to give me money for my therapy. So uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's basically the whole, that's basically the whole deal, I think, unless I missed anything you think. No, yeah. Um, yeah. for the because you're fine. You said you found the like boards, mm. like around. Do you do you have like a whole like pile of like boards like just hanging What's, out in your space? <laughs> that you. It's funny. I actually I actually started using wood because a year ago when I got set up on the Saatchi website, I sold a piece pretty like you know a month or so after that, and I had to build a crate to do that. Um, <laughs> so I ordered a bunch of uh, plywood. 
and I built that crate and then I had a bunch left over and I didn't have much money to buy canvas anymore. So um, I just started using the wood and kind of just fell in love with using the wood and stuff. And I find like uh, illustrating on the wood, it really like just draws me into it because I really have to like, it's hard to make a, um, uh, an in, like uh, an impression on the wood with pencil and stuff. So um, it's just like, there's an intensity to that. I like, I like the art to be quite physical um which I kind of miss from the abstract paintings and um and now it's like there's a lot of for some reason there's just like some, like a bunch of wood in Hackney Wood there's a lot of like scrap wood um I don't know it must, it must be a lot of like um building sites around and stuff so I'm just lucky that I don't I just don't want to now that I found a bunch of free scrap wood I don't want to like buy a you know, sheet from some like wood merchants for 30 pounds or something so um it's also like nice because I love like the ethos of street art that you can like go out and just like with no permission and no rules and stuff you can just put your art on a wall and you know a thousand people see it on their way to work uh and but I don't really have like the gumption to go out and do that so I kind of prefer going and taking a bit of like structure off the street and like dragging it back into my room and and then doing my art on it there so I guess that's like my way of um you know following that ethos that I really respect so great Thanks. Well, I'm sorry in a way that we <laughs> contribute that you did it weren't aware of the building of the crate beforehand, but oh, that's <laughs> I'm glad we were able to be a part of the creative process for yeah. you. <laughs> well, that's that's a public that's... service announcement to all artists. The packaging is your responsibility. So make sure you <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> well, we have touched on this a bit, but I think we can continue to explore it, um, the themes and messages you um, are trying to convey in your work. And um, do you want your audience to take something away from your work? Do you do you think about that? Um, so Ray, if we can start with you, that would be great. Sure. Um, uh, I might come across as a little guarded with this, but I think if I answer it too explicitly, it might take away some of the weight that I feel with the work. Um, I'm more interested in what people experience without me giving like verbal clues. Um, but I can say that um, art making is a way for me to see all experiences as valuable, whether they're painful or anxiety inducing or joyful. Um, so for me, the work is a place to put my own like frustration and adoration, um, hope and anxiety. Um, I'm also, I think I believe in like letting the right audience find you. Um, not everything can be for everyone. Um, but I think my, my biggest hope is that my work will speak to the people that need it. Um, so, and also since a lot of it is me talking to myself, just imagining what I, wouldn't like to see in the world when I was at a different point in my life. And do you enjoy um, exhibiting your work and hearing the feedback from the people that come to view it? Um, or it does it give you anxiety or do you do you welcome it? Um, it's always a little scary. Um, I think it definitely was scarier when I was younger and less, um, I think, earlier works I felt more like I had to put everything out there all the time and let everyone have a piece of it and now I feel like I have a little more practice with putting out there what I need to put out there and trusting the right people to find it if they need it and trusting kind of like I feel like audiences self-select sometimes I think most often if someone doesn't like your work they just move on um but it has been very rewarding to um like I had my first solo show about a year ago in May and the reception at the time was awesome. But my favorite thing has been like when I'm introduced to new people now in the Chicago art community and they're like, oh yeah, I remember your solo show. And like, just the fact that like some little thing that I made in my kitchen resonated with someone and they remember it a year from then is like, yeah, really astounding. Yeah. It's amazing. Can I ask a follow-up question? For sure. Um, are there ever pieces that when you finish them, you feel the need to like hold on to, like just for yourself? Mm -hmm. Um, some of them definitely stay with me longer. I think the one on the left up here, um, with the ear is actually the painting of 
my girlfriend's ear and the earrings that she wears and it's painted on a bed sheet that I slept on for a long time and so those materials all feel very personal and dear to me um and so it's one that I've kept in my home a lot longer than some others uh, there are definitely others that feel like something I needed to get out and then I'm okay with letting it go and then some of them I just want to live with longer and then eventually I'll reach a point where I'm like okay I need to make room for something new um yeah that's great. That's so <laughs> cool that you did that on your bed sheet. I love that. Um, Eleanor, um, I know that you recently exhibited at the other art fair. Um, did you enjoy that okay. experience? Was um, was there anything that you wanted um, the audience to take away from it or that you were surprised that they took away from your work? Um, yeah, so I did <laughs> exhibit at the other art fair. Mm -hmm. uh, and I did enjoy it. It was. Um, you don't have to quiet. keep it specific to the other art fair. Right. I would say just in general, yeah. showing your work. I was more. I was more going to say it was a whirlwind getting that much feedback, in such mm -hmm. a compact time frame, and in such a uh, kind of hefty amount of people <laughs> way. <laughs> um, it was. It it was really interesting. Actually, I don't think. I mean, I've told you a bit about kind of what goes into my paintings, but I don't think I necessarily tell you what to feel, I hope. And I think it's been interesting um, seeing how much that varies and being able to, to I mean, maybe I read patterns into it, but being, being able to kind of see, it feels like people with different experiences um, in life, put different things on them which is kind of exactly what I'm interested in anyway um it's about the kind of story making around objects and the desire you have for that um but I think when I paint them they they obviously come from me um and my life experience and that can be quite an emotional one so it's really interesting and also quite a an emotional thing having to accept when someone else has something else to say about your work um especially when it's quite so close to my heart um yeah uh can you remind me what else I need to say no I mean that, that's perfect I mean I can imagine that not being an artist myself that it, it feels a bit exposed in a way but like gratifying to have people yeah. interested and and relate to it in some way so yeah yeah absolutely yeah it really it's really gratifying it really is I think also um I think to be honest like part of what I paint about is very much to do with I mean I kind of look at them as a, a woman I suppose or like a body who has is a woman um and I think that that experience I kind of I feel like being a woman in the in the history of the world <laughs> is quite subversive in a way to paint an empty room. And I mean, you can decide what you feel about that, but I think it's been really interesting seeing how different people react to that um, and how different people's life experiences take that, I suppose. Yeah, and it can be quite, for me, because I have quite strong views around certain things, I think it's, um, yeah, some, sometimes really grat gratifying, sometimes it's almost hurtful, and but only only because it's so close to me, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But it's always, it's a, it's a beautiful thing all around, it's just, an, it's amazing how emotional it is, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're putting yourself out there on on the yeah. canvas so. yeah exactly great um thank you and dylan um mm. is there anything that you would like your audience to take away from the work or any experiences that you've had exhibiting that you'd like to share um i don't I, yeah i've been struggling with this one i've been trying to think like as they've been speaking what what it is like i want people to take away from it i mean i'm pretty like I have a very like open mind to what people's like interpretations of the work is and I can understand how 
a lot of the work could be quite confusing. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess it's kind of cliche, but I mean, my favorite like reactions in like a live scenario, like when I'm at a show or something and someone's looking at my work, I mean, it, it sounds kind of naff, but I think like when a kid is looking at your work and they're like, you know, they go wide eyed and, you know, make a noise or something. That's quite cool. Uh, <laughs> if you can like spy that in a, in a, in a, in a child, that's quite nice. Um, and I don't know, I have a sense of like, I think because I mean, for all of us, like, making art is a very like personal thing and we do it by ourselves you know um and I think for me that's always like provided a sense of like detachment from like how other people look at it and stuff and I've never really felt like when my work's on display that I'm on display I can like kind of detach the two um and I, I don't know I just like I guess I just if I'm if I if I put on like a show I guess like my main like objective is for people to just like have fun you know and like and be able to like come into the room and you know escape for however long they're in there for and I keep on using that word escape but you know that is basically like my main motivation and stuff and I just kind of want people to like um you know I, I guess I do want them to th to think about certain things um but you know I I, I try and like I, I guess it maybe sounds a bit coarse but sometimes I try and avoid discussing my work with people um because mm. one I feel like well I'm, I mean a lot of the time you get the same questions which can get like a little uh, tiresome and stuff not to be rude <laughs> but then it's also, I think there is like a trend of like over explaining art and stuff and I kind of like when people just um, can like come in you know look at the work enjoy it have their own interpretation of it and kind of leave like my intentions a bit of like a mystery or something you know I kind of enjoy that um, it's like I don't know if like every time you watch the film you wouldn't expect the director to come out and answer all your questions about what it was and stuff I kind of like enjoy the fact that I can watch that and try and imagine what his intentions were when he was making it and then like have like come up with my own you know conclusions as to what it was you know and what it is for me um so I guess I like to watch people's reactions but I don't want to like listen to them <laughs> which I don't know it's <laughs> kind of weird but I imagine that people ask you a lot about the the work because of the the detail and complexity and they probably are trying to sort it out in their minds what it's all about. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, you'd be surprised. I think, I mean, I like, you know, I'm always like kind of hoping for a good question and I always just get how long did it take me to make? Um, <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, like well, it's more recent that uh, the the work's become so like um, detailed and that it's like followed this kind of like narrative and stuff. Uh, so and I haven't really put that on display in in a kind of uh, you know collectively all together in, on its own in a room and stuff yet. So I guess when that happens, maybe I will get the right questions and I'll be able to you know yeah get some interesting answers in. But um, yeah. So how long does it take you to complete a piece? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, well, actually, the next question, I do have a question. Maybe this will be a good one, Dylan. Of, um, I'm completely joking because I also understand what you get at it with the yeah. exhaustion of art history. But um, in terms of influences, uh, uh -huh. do you did you grow up like doing comic books or is there a certain artist or... Um, I know we all kind of, you all kind of talked about family members and people you're close to that inspire mm. you. Um, but I guess I'm more interested in the question of, yeah, any kind of media or artists that are inspiring your work. Yeah. I mean, well, sorry, should I go first? Or... Yeah. But, yeah. yeah sure. Um, I, th I mean, I went through like a pretty like drastic change as a person, like uh, over the period of like discovering art and discovering how much I love doing it and stuff. And I, before that, I mean, I was always really into music and grew up loving films and stuff. And like I said, always thought I'd work in the industry of something creative. Um, and I definitely, I mean, I definitely missed out on the whole comic book thing, which I really kick myself for now. And now that I'm studying, I like I, I like research a lot of comic book art book artists and. Uh, I really get a lot of inspiration and I really like wish when I was a kid I, I you know I'd had that kind of craze or whatever but I really missed out on that whole thing um, and when I was like when I started doing art I think uh, I was going through a bit of like I dropped out of uni and I became quite like cynical against the whole I don't know like you know I was young and angry and cynical and alienated and I just like I went through a bit of like a punkification and got really into punk music and stuff and I I tried to like definitely tried to for the first like couple of years of dinner I like really thought I was trying to like just emulate what I was listening to and make it like something visual 
So I really, um, I just wanted like a lot of, uh, I just wanted it, yeah, to like, if I could like, I used to say that if I could make my art look like the music I listen to, then I'm doing my job pretty good. Um, so I just like, and then in that sense, I would be getting a lot of aggression out and stuff and making the, and making everything loud and everything is still quite loud now. So, and, and the combination of, of music and, and the visual art is still very like present for me. Um, and now as I, as I like, as I study and as I'm like becoming more professional, um, there's a lot of more like visual artists who are like coming into my like sphere of influence. Um, uh, and so, I mean, some of them are even people I discovered through music. Um, one of them is a comic book artist and a collage artist called Brian Chippendale, who I discovered through um, a band that uh, he's like the drummer slash singer for. Um, and then, uh, you know, there's not really a lot of like a classical um, artists that I, um, I mean, like I went through an Egon Shield phase, I think when I was like 17, I just like a slight interest. Um, but now it's just more like quite like somewhat like esoteric internet artists that I find you know, and a lot of like street artists like David Cho is a is a favorite artist of mine like mm. a lot of just like quite like uh, artists that follow like a certain like kind of punk ethos I guess that um that I really like dig so I mean that's about it that's all I got <laughs> Wait. um Ray or Eleanor major influences sure um I feel like I often find myself drawn to people who are not making paintings. I think I'm very hard on painters. Um, <laughs> there's such a, a large history of paintings. I feel like it's very easy to make lazy paintings. Um, so I really love Felix Gonzalez Torres's work, uh, Robert Gober, uh, Mona Hatoum has some really beautiful sculptures that stick with me. Um, I really love, I, and I'm super jealous of Via Selman's work. Um, she has these pieces where she like found rocks that she was drawn to and then created exact replicas of them like by hand painting every little pore on the rock surface and just that like that attention to detail is really amazing to me. Um, and then I'm also just very inspired by life with my partner Kat DeRoos um, where she she's also an artist and just seeing her attention to detail of everyday life and really beautiful meals um it just it feels like a great source for the energy I try to tap into of um treating every object in life as important and worth study um yeah great that's really that's really cool that your partner also is do you ever collaborate um Yes, uh, she actually just did a big project for Bonnaroo Music Festival in Tennessee, and so oh, I was wow. the driver and uh, handyman, and um, <laughs> so, you know, she's someone who also knows how to put her shoulders into things, and so I think, yeah, there's a, a big future of us collaborating. Great, and mm -hmm. Eleanor, if you don't have to take the question if you don't want to, but any, like, <laughs> historical influences for artists or media that you really speak to you um yeah I mean I think I'm kind of the the same in that I don't look to painters that much apart from maybe um just in in awe like there's I will I might look at a Rembrandt and be like that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, I don't I don't feel like that's kind of what pushes me to make I honestly think that quite often um some really weird sound piece that I found on Bandcamp <laughs> or um so something I I've read someone's story um yeah um I I like I said books so that Angela Carter book I was also obsessed with Parable of the Sour for a while and just um, I got I went down a bit of a rabbit hole with I, like ideas on empathy and what it could mean to truly empathize with things. Um, it comes from all kinds of places, really. I think also, so like I said, I grew up in the countryside, and um, sometimes I think it's quite funny how uh, empty of people my paintings are <laughs> um, because. <laughs> that that was obviously quite a big experience of me growing up because we lived a little bit too far away from 
people um, for me to be around them all the time. I also, I did also grow up in quite a big family, but that doesn't always mean, I don't know. Yeah, I think a, a kind of love of being alone and just kind of knowing it quite well, I think is there. Um, and that's kind of an inspiration, I suppose. Great. Thanks everyone for sharing. Um, so we are running a little bit late on time. Um, I think now I'll just ask if anybody who's um, attending would like to ask a question of any of the artists, please put it in the chat. In the meantime, um, do any of you have any current or future projects you would like to share with us, um, share with the community um, so we can see what you're working on next or where to find you? Um, whoever wants to jump in first is fine. Yeah, I'm actually, normally I work and live in Chicago, but right now I'm in Texas um, on the border of Mexico at this new art residency called the Flower Shop Art Studio. It's in this like really gorgeous historical house. It's run by painter Jesus Trevino. So he's hosting, uh, I believe four artists at a time for a month um, to come and study. And we work in a shared studio space. So I've uh, been excited about the projects that are coming out of that. That's great. Still in Eleanor, are you guys working on any new projects? Uh, <laughs> well, I'm still, uh, I'm like currently like in the middle of doing a, a BA in fine art. So I guess like that's really like what's oh. taking up most of my time and stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, I can show you right now, you know, what I'm working on in the studio. If that, does that work? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whatever you'd like. Paint, there's a drawing that's on its way. So yeah, well, that's a current yeah. project, I suppose. Um. But yeah, that's about it. Very cool. Um, I am actually, because I've only just moved, I am in the process of trying to find a studio. <laughs> and I feel yeah. like, so I'm, I'm, yeah, research and relocation is kind of where I'm at right now. I have I have managed to make paintings inside my room. Um, so I have, I, I'm not kind of stunted completely, but yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. <laughs> Well, we're excited to see where, <laughs> where, where it leads, and hopefully, we hope you find a new studio. Thank <laughs> you. That's always nice. Yeah. Um, so I don't know that anybody's asked any questions. Everybody's a bit shy. Um, I don't know if there's anything else that you all would like to share with us, or um, anything you want to talk about. But uh, we are so grateful. To have you thank you so much this has been a wonderful chat um, oh, thank you. and we loved that you could share your insights with us i feel like i learned a lot so i hope everybody else did um and then for those of you who are joining us today um, we encourage you to learn more about these artists and the other featured artists in our rising stars campaign by going to sachiart.com you can go to the inspiration tab at the top of your screen and that will lead you to the rising stars feature um, and um, as a reminder, you can always reach out to the art advisory team um, by and by contacting us um, via Sachi Art, and um, we're happy to help you with um, these works, these artists' works, or any of the works you find and um, any questions you might have. So, thank you all again for joining us today. Um, it has been really nice. So, we hope to see you again soon.